I think I've not given a book hint uh, in several weeks. Uh, I like to give one every week or two. Sometimes we're so busy in the revivals that's not possible. I'm sitting here on the lawn of a historical site in Ringgold, Georgia. That's the city where I'll be preaching revival uh, beginning Sunday morning. And uh, this is called in the community now the Old Stone Church. The congregation was first established in 1837. Can you imagine that? Moved to this location, this building was erected in 1850. I got a feeling there's been some mighty powerful preaching in this place, in that building. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised there have been some souls walk the aisle, get on their knees, repent, and beg the Lord Jesus to be the Savior, the Lord of their lives. No doubt in my mind. Uh, the church actually began out of a camp meeting. The best I can tell from the historical markers, the Dogwood camp meeting. My, my, what preaching. What godly anointed preaching they must have heard. And I know this is a book in, so I can't talk about a, a, a beautiful historical church of the living God building, uh, but uh, the song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, we all know it. We sing it often in our services, don't we? It was first sung in this building, written and first sung in this building, led by the pastor at that time. What a fellowship. What a joy divine, I'd say amen. Leaning on the everlasting, I'm glad underneath me today are the everlasting arms of my Lord and my Savior. Preacher, did you say something about a book? I did. I have been preaching recently from the book of Ruth. Oh, how I've enjoyed uh, that series of sermons. I have profited greatly studying preparing then hallelujah God has given me liberty preaching and teaching the book of Ruth only four chapters only 85 verses you can read it in about 16 minutes but as I studied and I've used a plethora of commentaries this one has been especially sweet it is my book hint for today the name of it uh, you don't have to worry about Leopold Classic Library. Uh, that is a company that reprints old, long since, uh, out of circulation, out of print books. Here's the title, Ruth the Gleaner. Can you see that? Ruth the Gleaner. And since Ruth is such a short book, uh, the author has also added a biographical study of Esther the Queen, both or in this book. And they got it in just under 300 pages as well. Now let me give, the, give you the author. William M. Taylor. Uh, my uncle, who's an evangelist in my book, a great evangelist of bygone years, introduced me to William M. Taylor years ago. Preacher Taylor was born in 1829. He died in 1895 after a life of uh, great ministry, preaching the Word of God and writing especially, writing especially Bible biography. Let me, I recommend it. I, I'm very pleased with how he handles the book of Ruth. Uh, here are some of his other titles previous titles. I thought it was right here at the front. I'm going to have to turn two or three pages. Daniel the Beloved. David, King of Israel. I've not read the Daniel book. I have used portions of the David book. Joseph the Prime Minister. Elijah the Prophet. I want to preach a series of sermons a whole week sometime in the future, God willing. 
the Lord don't come back on Elijah. I'd like to preach every sermon in that revival on the life of Elijah. Should I do so, if God gives me liberty, I will use Taylor's book, Elijah the Prophet. Peter the Apostle. Moses. I guess they don't have muffler laws around here. Moses the lawgiver. Paul the missionary. And then as I've shown you, Ruth the gleaner. He takes the sweetest approach to the book of Ruth. He doesn't add a lot of non-Bible material. I can't get into that. He follows the text, follows the scripture, and beautifully, beautifully handles God's word reverently like it ought to be. Now, did you remember his name? William M. Taylor. The book that my uncle gave me was a hardback book, brown cover. I don't know you'll be able to find those, but the reprints should be readily available. William M. Taylor, Ruth the Gleaner, combined with Esther the Queen. It's Ruth the Gleaner I have most recently used. And all the, I noticed, um, I looked it up online just before I sat down to talk to you. I, I noticed he's got, uh, he's got a book on the parables of our Lord. That would interest me greatly as well. Book hint, just thought I would share it with you on what is today a beautiful summer Friday afternoon. Do remember this, preachers, Sunday school teachers. It will take some effort to read. You're go especially in this day now, uh, we, we get little sound clips and then we re we re read little, little quotes on, on some social media. We're losing our ability to sit down and read an hour or two hours. Don't let the devil rob that from you. It will take some time, it will take some effort, but I urge you, be a reader. Study, prepare yourself so you can feed your congregation, so you can feed your Sunday school class to the glory of God. And you know what I'm going to say as, as we conclude the book hint. Readers are leaders. Readers are leaders. Be a leader to the glory of God. Someone said preaching is overflow. It's not the cute little outline. It's not the little joke somebody might tell at the front or the back of the sermon. It, it is not. You get yourself full of the Word of God, pray yourself full of the power of the Holy Ghost, and you go in that pulpit and you just bubble out. You just overflow. You share with them what God's been sharing with you, and I promise you, the Holy Spirit will honor it. God will confirm His Word.